Why is a time shift of a signal also a phase rotation in frequency? Well, this is what the Fourier transform tells us it's going to be. So let's try to understand that a bit more intuitively. Here it says the time domain signal X, when it's shifted in time by Tor, the Fourier transform says that you get the same Fourier transform as the original signal, but multiplied by this term here. And this is a complex number with a unit magnitude. So therefore, it is only doing a phase rotation. And its rotation is minus two pi times Tor, which was the time shift, times the frequency. So this is a function of frequency. So let's understand why that's the case. Well, let's look at an example of the basic cos waveform. So here I've plotted a cos waveform at a particular frequency f1. Now let's look at what happens when we time shift that waveform. So here I've drawn the time shifted waveform. You can see it's shifted to the right by Tor. And if we're in the equation, we replace t by t minus Tor, then we can see the we get the cos of 2 pi f1t, same as here, minus this component here, which comes about from the Tor. And you can see that for this waveform, it only has one frequency, f1. So this is a constant term. It is a constant phase. So this for this cos waveform, at this particular frequency, the time shift gives a phase rotation. So that matches up with what the equation tells us from Fourier transform. Now let's try and see if this generalizes, which of course it does. Let's think of other waveforms. Let's look at a waveform of twice the frequency of this one. Here I've drawn this waveform twice the frequency of the one above. Now, when we time shift this waveform by Tor, we can see again, of course, it shifts to the right, but now we can see there is a bigger effect in terms of the wavelength. So here now it has gone a quarter wavelength shift to the right. So that means a phase shift of a quarter of two pi. Whereas up here, the phase shift was a smaller percentage of the wavelength. And so the phase shift here was only one eighth. Whereas here, it's a quarter the way I've drawn it. So the higher the frequency, the more the phase shift. Again, this matches up with this equation. So let's try and get intuition on more general signals, not just cos waves. So let's do this by starting off looking at the rect function. So here's the rect function, a square like this. And in the Fourier transform, it tells us that the magnitude is a sinc function, this sinc function here. Let's try to visualize this and understand this, particularly by then thinking about doing a time shift. But before we do the time shift, let's think about the frequency components of this waveform here. Uh, let me draw them. I'm going to draw them not for this rect function, but for a square wave. So imagine the rect function continues and is periodic. Uh, and if you want a video on understanding and visualizing the frequency components of this, you can check out the description below. There's another video on the channel. So if this is a repeating clock waveform, uh, then these would be the frequency components, the sinusoidal frequency components, because Fourier tells us any signal can be made up of frequency components of different sinusoids with different amplitudes and phases. These are the ones which can go together to make a square clock wave. So let's just analyze this in a bit of detail. This one here is the cos wave that matches with the period of this square. This one is, uh, and where is it over here on the frequency plot? That is this frequency here. So there's a positive amount of that frequency. Okay, and what about this one here? Well, this one is, you can see this here, is at two and a half times that frequency. And this is a negative cos wave, or it's a cos wave with a 180 degree phase shift. So that is at this frequency here, and it's got a 180 degree phase shift. Then the next component of the clock waveform is this one here. And you can see this one here is two and a half times the frequency. So on our plot over here, that is here. 
And we can and we can see this is again zero phase cos because it's it's got a maximum at zero time. So this is going so these three go zero phase, uh, 180 degree phase, zero phase again. And for the rect function, it has more than just these components. As we can see here, it's got a continuum of components, but we can see that the phase has this form here. So matching with what we're saying. So the frequency component that is for matching with the, the period of here, there's a zero phase. This is the phase plot here. At the one and a half times, there is a negative 180 degree phase. At the two and a half times, this one here, again, it's a cos wave with a peak at zero. So it's a, it's a zero phase again. And this is the phase plot for this square rect function looks like this. Okay, so hopefully you've got sort of a visual of not just the amplitude components of the rect in the frequency domain, but the phase components as well. They go from zero to negative 180 to zero. Zero, negative 180, zero. Okay, so what is the effect of a time shift? And let's see what happens in the phase. So here now, We've got a time-shifted rect function, time-shifted by Tor. And of course, all of the frequency component waveforms all just shift exactly the same. We're shifting this waveform, they're all its component shift. And that's what I'm showing here. Now let's think back to what we saw over here. And we notice that the higher frequency waveforms have a bigger phase shift for the same time offset. So here we go, all of these components have been shifted by the same time. The higher frequency components have more of a phase shift. This one here just shifted by a small amount in terms of proportion of its uh, wavelength. This one here shifted by a bigger amount. Uh, this one sh here shifted by an even bigger amount as a proportion of its wavelength. And we can see those increasing phase uh, effects as we go down the components that make up this waveform. So let's see what happens over in the frequency domain. Well, this is no longer a zero phase cos wave. It's a cos wave with a shift exactly like we saw up here. And so it's going to have a negative phase. So at that frequency, we are now getting a negative phase component, a small amount of negative phase. This one here is going to have a bigger phase shift. It was already 180 degrees phase shifted, but now it's 180 degrees with an extra phase shift because of this time shift, which is a function of its frequency. And here it's going to be again back to the zero phase, but now not zero anymore, a much larger phase shift. So now I've plotted this phase function for this time shifted rect function. And you can see it matches with the phase of the non-time shifted function, but now where there's an extra phase, which is a function of the frequency. So hopefully this video has given you more insights into why a time shift in the time domain is the same as a phase rotation in the frequency domain for general signals. If it has, like the video, helps others to find it, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and check out the description below where you'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel and summary sheets. And you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I'm on a search to find signals in everyday life.